Hi, I'm Belinda Cowley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I want to talk to you about degradability of silicons. There's so much misinformation out there, I wanted to set the record straight. First of all, I want to look at some definitions that are very important in explaining the degradability of silicons. The first is biodegradable. Now this actually means that a substance is capable of being decomposed by the action of biological agents, especially bacteria. And then there is degradable, which relates to a compound that breaks down into simpler compounds by stages. During the degradation of a degradable compound, well-defined intermediate products are created. These definitions are important because a lot of consumers get confused between biodegradability and degradability and don't realise that just because a substance isn't necessarily biodegradable doesn't mean that it isn't degradable. In fact, silicons have a complete recyclable pathway. Silicons are processed from the quartz in sand to begin with. And if you look at the degradation pathway, that's exactly where they end up again. Silica and sand also makes up the second most abundant mineral in the earth. It's around 15% of the earth's crust. So we're not gonna run out of it anytime soon. And because of the way that silicon materials degrade back into their starting materials, we're certainly not gonna run out of them ever from the production of silicons, especially those used in cosmetics. You can see that silicons that end up in the soil quickly degrade to their monomer form. From this monomer form, they are then able to degrade further through microbes or light to become carbon dioxide and their starting silicate material. But what about silicons that end up in our wastewater? Well, there's two types of silicons that we use in our cosmetics and personal care that we need to look at the degradation pathways. The first is polydimethylsiloxane. This is commonly called dimethicone or other dimethicone derivatives. The other is volatile methyl siloxanes. These are things like your cyclomethicones that get used because most of the material evaporates off of the skin or hair at body temperature, leaving a light feeling after application. They're especially useful in your foundation products so that you have a weightless finish and in your hair products so that you again have quite a weightless finish after application to tame that frizz and help with styling protection. Volatile methyl siloxanes evaporate quickly into the air and degrade completely in the presence of sunlight to silica, water and carbon dioxide. Your polydimethyl siloxanes will usually float on top of water, being lighter than water, and move to soil or sand areas where they then degrade into their monomers and degrade further into carbon dioxide and the starting silicate material. Some of these materials will sink to sediments and sludge at the bottom of water, where they will either degrade or could be collected to improve the quality of soils used for agriculture or other purposes. In fact, I did a little experiment in my office to see just how quickly a volatile methyl siloxane evaporates. On this watch glass, I've measured out a certain amount of cyclomethicone. Now this represents the amount of cyclomethicone you would commonly apply in a hair serum, and it represents about three times the amount of cyclomethicone that would normally be present in a day's application of foundation. So there's about three days worth of foundation cyclomethicone here, if we were to use that in that formula, and about a day's worth of hair serum cyclomethicone. After just two days sitting in my office at 24 degrees, you can see that most of it has completely evaporated. The remainder would be easy to degrade in soil down to its monomer form and then into carbon dioxide and its starting silicates. The fact is we should be far more concerned about the amount of plastics that we use every day because they're here for far longer than our silicons ever will be. The silicon degradation pathway happens within days, so it's completely recycled itself within a very short time frame. Plastic bags, by comparison, take 10 to 20 years to degrade, and plastic containers that a lot of your cosmetics come in take up to 500 years. 
We really don't need to be concerned about the presence of silicons in our waterways because they degrade within days and once they hit the soil, it's a very fast process indeed. Silicons get an undeservedly bad rap, so I hope this video has helped you understand that they are a degradable material and they revert back to their starting materials. In fact, silicons are GMO free, palm free, non-comedogenic, non-irritating and vegan friendly. For a formulator, they are non-oxidative, so we don't have any sort of oxidative issues and they allow us to create and innovate products that aren't possible from using some other natural materials. If you want to use more natural materials for your own reasons or branding, that's fine. But we shouldn't be slagging off silicons as being non-biodegradable because they are degradable materials. We do of course have all of this information and the facts for you to check. Just contact us, we're happy to share them with you so that you can see the truth about the degradability of silicons. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it really informative about the usefulness and degradability of silicons. Please give the video a thumbs up, please have any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!